Today, I will talk about the educational attainment and wage inequality in Thailand uh, using quantile regression analysis from 2009 to 2018. Uh, since inequality is one of the main concerns that several countries all over the world face, uh, especially in the developing country, this issue tends to be more pronounced. Like Thailand, for example, Thailand is one of the countries with the highest income inequality in the world. Uh, for example, the wealthiest 1% of the total population in Thailand owns more than 67% of the national net worth. And this number is even higher than Russia, Turkey, and India. And from the World Bank, uh, it is reported Thailand inequality has increased over the past few years. And the country's poverty rates also grew from 7 to 9% during the period of study. Uh, moreover, in Southeast Asia, Thailand also has the highest income Gini coefficient at almost 60% in 2019 which is also high, high, the highest in East Asia and Pacific region. So income inequality is the biggest issue in Thailand. While people in rural area continue to suffer from the lower rate of income, low education, and many dependents and difficult living conditions. So inequality problem is a serious issue that we need to address. And the cause of the widening income inequality are, for example, gender, males and female, because male tends to earn more than female and tends to have higher position. Uh, geography, urban or rural areas, or living in a mountain or near the river, ethnic city. Even though in Thailand, the ethnic city is not much of a problem in Thailand. Uh, and education or skill or globalization and technology. And uh, so one we would like to I would like to discuss one of the factors, which is education. Even though it is source of inequality, it is still encouraged all over the world in every country as one way to break the cycle of poverty. So with this aspect, education can be seen to lower the inequality gap by getting more and more people out of the poverty. And the study that the studies that focus on education seems to have mixed result. Some say that higher education reduced inequality in society, especially in the developed countries. And a number of research also show that the returns to each level of education contributes to wage inequality. Uh, especially in developing countries. Thus, the effect of education on income inequality remains ambiguous based on the country's time frame and the methodology and environments. Um, other empirical evidence also varies. For example, uh, Falaris in Panama, Budria in Greece, Norway in Italy. Budria and Moro Etico in Spain, Patrinos found in most Latin American country and Tanso and Bodo in Turkey, Martin and Peria in 16 developed European countries. All of these people found that education contributes to income inequality. And a study on Asian countries uh, from 1960 to 2015 reveals that uh, all level of education enrollments also increased inequality. So most of the study that I found, 
they show that education seemed to increase inequality. And for as for this study, we will investigate how the returns to each level of education contributes to wage inequality in Thailand between 2009 and 2018. The method of analysis used, we will use OLS and quantile regression. It will be more like a descriptive analysis. Uh, we estimate the mensurian wage equation for individuals aged between 15 and 75 living in the central region of Thailand with recorded positive income. Uh, because in the data that we use, the youngest people who can earn weight is 15 years old and the oldest is 75. And we use the level of education instead of years of schooling. Uh, the levels of education used in this analysis is classified into five categories. The first one being primary or less, this as lower secondary, upper secondary, vocational school, and university education. Uh, moving on to the background on Thailand's education system. In Thailand, the basic education is said to comp comprise of six years of elementary school and six years of secondary school. And out of 12 years of basic education, only nine years are compulsory. The nine year are six year of elementary school and three years of lower secondary school. However, uh, the average years of schooling in Thailand is still lower than the compulsory level, which is ranging from 7.5 to 8.8 years. Uh, for, as for the gender gap in schooling in Thailand, it has shown to be narrowing since 1990. So the gender gap in Thailand is not the big issue. And between 2000 and 2018, adult literacy rate from males had not changed much, but it changed from female from 91 to 92% during the same period. Uh, also, some other problems about Thailand education, even though that they claim they launched the policy claiming that the basic education from primary to high school is free for everyone, but the school at, that are actually free are few in number. Moreover, the quality of the school that are actually free, they are relatively deficient compared to those that require enrollment fees. Moreover, the quality of education between college is also very different. Uh, those that graduate from top university or well-known universities in Thailand would receive higher pays than those who graduate from a local university. And the problem of the higher education is a result of the low quality of the lower level of education. Uh, from as for the methodology, uh, we we use both techniques, which are OLS and quantile regression. Um, the OLS results are computed based on the mean conditional con distribution of the dependent variables, and it assumes that the marginal impact are constant over the weight distribution line. So it may not be the best fit for some of the analysis when the data is not equally distributed. Also, we will use the quantile regression that is first introduced by Coenker and Bassett 1978 here to allow the investigation into different points of conditional weight distribution. Uh, the graph that I show here, just to give you a better idea of how the weight distributes uh, in most country is not uniform, but it's mostly concentrated on the bottom of the distribution line. Uh, next uh, is the wage, 
with uh, the quantile regression model. Uh, X here is a vector of exogenous variables or control variables, which includes age, age square, gender, male to female, education dummy, uh, ranging from five category that was explained earlier, geographic location, uh, which indicates whether they live in Bangkok or live outside Bangkok. And beta is the vector of parameter. Uh, moving on to the data description. Uh, this study is based on the labor force survey conducted by National Statistic Organization of Thailand. And the data we use ranging from 2009 to 2018 covers individuals aged between 15 and 75 who are living in the central of Thailand, which includes the capital of Bangkok. In the 10 year sample, the samples are composed of uh, 181,000 samples in total, individuals in total. For the cross-section analysis, the numbers of samples in 2009 is 19,000, and the number of samples in 2018 is 17,000. In the analysis, every body, every individual works in the formal sector. This is because in the informal sector, they did not report their income or wage. And the same also apply to the self-employment. A firm with more than 100 employees is classified as a large firm because that the, the highest category for the number of employees in the labor force survey of Thailand, they only specified up to 100 employees. Industry and occupation also included but not shown in the result. Other dummies include being female household head, being married, and living in Bangkok or in the central region outside Bangkok. Uh, this, this map show the central area of Bangkok with uh, Bangkok in the middle, central area of Thailand with Bangkok in the middle. So the the dummy indicates uh, the whole area or the bank, the only the people live in Bangkok. Uh, with about 25% of people live in Bangkok, as opposed to the rest in the central re region. And individuals in the sample are classified according to their highest educational attainment at the time of the interview. And we're gonna use five quantiles. In, which includes the 10th, 25th, 50th, 75th, and 90th quantiles. And the total income in analysis includes wage, bonus, and overtime earning, and calculated into hourly wage. Uh, table one shows summary statistics for wage inequality and educational distribution from 2009 to 2000. 18. Uh, this is weight hourly. The mean hourly weight is bad per hour in Thailand. In 2009, the hourly weight was 45 baht per hour. In 2018, it increased by 51% to 68 baht per hour. Uh, to give you the idea, of how much bar cost. If you use the you use the current exchange rate, you can you can multiply by four, roughly. But in back in two thousand nine, back in two thousand eighteen, with that exchange rate back then, you can multiply by about two point five or something less than three. So the minimum wage in Thailand in 2009 was only like 100 yen or some 150 yen back then. And we all, I also reported the hourly wage per quantile 
uh, from fifth to ninety fifth quantiles. The minimum weight on the 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 mean the average weight in the fifth quantile also increased in uh, from two thousand nine to two thousand eighteen. It increased its double during the period from 14 baht per hour to almost 30 baht per hour. Uh, the average weight in the quantile 10 also almost double. However, the average weight in the highest quantile, in the highest 50, 95th quantile increased by 34%. It increased the with the smallest amount and the weight ratio. Um, when we compare the highest quantile, the 95th and the fifth quantile the, and the lowest fifth quantile, uh, the difference between these two decreased over time and it decreased the most, but for, for the middle quantiles and the lowest quantile difference, it decreased by about 20%. Next is educational distribution, uh, which is the number of people who, who has that education at that time of the interview. Also in 2009, about 43% of people in the in to, in the interview in a survey have primary school or less uh and this number decreased by about 10 or 12% in 2018 however in other educational levels from middle school to university this number of increased over the period of study which means that more and more people have become more educated over time. Uh, next, uh, the estimation result. Uh, the table two that I will present here, I will show you here, present OLS and quantile estimates for the overall 10-year data. The OLS and quantile results are all statistically significant at 1% level. Uh, the reference group for the for the education is primary or less schooling. So the OLS on this side and the quantile regression here. So being older, being older and being household head, being male and being married and live in Bangkok, work for a large firm, earns relatively more than its counterpart. And uh, for the education level, university degree earns the most as expected uh, compared to, uh, and the number becomes smaller when you go lower the, the education level. And for the comparing the small, the lowest quantile and the highest quantile, age becomes less significant, uh, less important factor in the higher quantiles. Also, uh, being, being female has more disadvantage at the higher quantiles and the marriage coefficient also becomes bigger when you move up the quantiles. Uh, however, working for a large firm becomes less important in the higher quantiles. Uh, for the marriage coefficient, this can mean that people who are richer, who is a weight earner in the highest quantile tends to get married more compared to those people on the lower quantiles. And for the education level, the number also goes up al along the quantiles, along the weight distribution line uh, for the university. This means that uh, at the higher quantiles, 
the returns to each level of education becomes more prominent. And uh, for the cross-section analysis, uh, we will compare the estimation for 2009 and 2018. So first 2009, uh, for the household characteristic, all coefficients here are statistically significant at 1% level. And overall, the results are in line with table two. Uh, for example, being old, being a household head, being male, being married, and live in Bangkok, work for a large firm, earns more relatively than its counterpart. And the trend overweight distribution also consistent with the result from table two. And this one is for 2018. Uh, all the significance and all the signs also, also in line with the table two and and in 2009. Uh, but what we what we can see here is that overall in years two, in 2018, the coefficient overall are smaller than 2009. And it become less important at higher quantiles. As you see on the Q10 compared to Q90, the coefficient becomes smaller and no clear relation between the location uh, of employment, uh, which is indicated by the living in the capital of dummy. Uh, Q10 and Q9, it goes down and goes up and down. Uh, and for a married male who is a household head, also plays a more important role at higher corn house. Uh, those who are a household head and being male and being married have higher coefficient at nine at Q90. The coefficients for age, household head, gender, marital status, regional dummy, and firm size have become smaller in, in magnitude except for the coefficient for living in Bangkok at the top corn house uh, for 2018 compared to the 2009. Coefficients for a uh, return to schooling. Here we will examine uh, for each education levels now. Um, so the university graduates still receive relatively higher wage than those who are not uh, compared to 2009 and 2018. In 2018, the overall coefficient have become smaller except for the Q90. Um, and so overall, the estimate for 2018 and 2009 have become smaller in every category, except for the Q90. Uh, this indicates that the inequality among the individuals in the same level or so-called within level inequality have become smaller over the period of, of study, except the highest quantile. However, the difference between education levels still indicates a positive contribution of education to inequality because these numbers are still positive. Uh, moreover, if you see the OLS estimates and the estimate at the median, uh, they are not the same. This indicates that the returns to each level of education is not uniformly distributed in the labor market. Uh, table five show measure of dispersion. So I just subtract the Q25 and Q20, uh, the Q75 and subtract the highest and lowest quantiles. And first let's discuss about the household characteristic of age being household head, female married living in my cotton last room over the years, over the period of study 2009 and 2018. So in general, the 
the spread between the lowest and highest quantiles is bigger uh, in general, except for age. Uh, and merit living in Bangkok. So overall, the household characteristic, uh, the inequality that is the result of household characteristic is not that pronounced, but for the education level, it's it's a lot bigger. Uh, which indicates that for the each education level, the inequality is more prevalent at both ends of wage distribution. Uh, for the age, it is not evident either in 2009 or 2018. And the change also not so significant. And being the household head, their income gap us also very small to begin with. Uh, the gap of the highest and lowest quantile are 5.6 compared to 3.2 in the middle quantiles. And the number changed, the number have become smaller over time. Uh, as for the female, uh, the female, um, the disadvantage of being a female has become less apparent, indicated by a smaller negative value between 2009 and 2000. 18. Uh, and next, uh, I'll talk about the changes in within group wage inequality uh, in between each level of education. We observe that the patterns regarding education contribute to inequality in, in 2009. This spread is about double of the Q75 and Q25. For 2018, the differences between Q90 to Q1 is more than double of that of Q75 and Q25. This indicates that wage dispersion has become even more concentrated at the tails of the wage distribution over time. Uh, as for the change, between the lowest and highest quantile in the 10 year period. For in the university level, the change uh, have become smaller by the smallest amount, uh, by the, the biggest amount. And next one is the high school, which is almost 10, uh, the difference has become smaller by almost 10%. Uh, for university, almost 13%. And the smallest change is found in primary or less schooling. Um, and also the differences between group is also found in each level of education. If you if you see the university compared to a primary, middle school, high school, vocational, these changes are also become smaller over time. This is because uh, the return to lower level of education increased more than the return to more than the increase in the returns of university degree. And uh, the con in conclusion, the between groups inequality between university level and other education level is reduced during the period of study. Uh, figure one to five plots returns to each level of education for each quantile along with OLS. The figure one, the OLS result, uh, this, the OLS is the turquoise line here. It's leaning more towards Q25. Uh, and over time, if you see in the middle, uh, Q75 to Q20, the gap have become smaller and is smallest in 2015 and 2016 before start widening again. 
uh, and the gap between Q10 and Q, Q90 is the smallest into uh, in 2015 uh, 15 and 16 and widening again. Uh, and figure two shows the result for middle school. Figure three shows the result for high school. Uh, the gap between the highest and lowest quantiles, also the smallest in 2015 for middle school earners and high school earners. Uh, for vocational school graduates, it also exhibit a wider income gap between each quant house in general uh, compared to the formal tree. The OLS, which is estimated by the quarter quai line, it lies between Q25 and Q50 line. It's It moves up a little bit. And the, the gap between Q75 to Q25 also become a little bit smaller over time, over this gap. While the, the gap between the highest and lowest quantile seem relatively unchanged, and the gap between the highest and lowest quantile is larger in 2017. And returns to, lastly, returns to university graduates. Shown in figure five, uh, the o OLS line, the closest to the Q50 line over here, and the Q75 and 25 spread uh, presented a shrinking trend like this one, and these two becomes a little bit smaller here over time. And the gap between the lowest tail and the lowest tail at the top and the bottom quant house is the smallest in 2015. This is just like other education category that it becomes smallest in 2015. And the discussion and conclusion of the result, this study explores the connection between educational attainment and weight inequality in Thailand during 2009 to 2018. Using OLS and quantile regression analysis, uh, we use log of hourly weight on individual characteristic and education levels. And the education levels used in this study is classified into five categories primary OLS, middle school, secondary or high school, vocational school, and university or higher. And the main result suggests is the following, uh, both within groups and between groups inequality are high throughout the period of study. Second, education positively contributes to income inequality and the effects becomes greater the higher education level is. And the analysis captures a slight decline in the within groups inequality between top quant house and bottom quant house, and a moderate reduction in the income gap between the same level, within the same education level in between the middle quant house. And the between groups inequality also manifested a decreasing trend over the period of study 2009 to 2018. And the reduction takes place mostly around the middle of the wage distribution. Five, university graduates experience the larger negative changes in income inequality compared to all other education categories. And these changes in income inequality are mainly caused by the fact that at the lower quantiles, uh, the wages rose at a, at a higher rate than the wages at the higher quantiles. Uh, hence, the smaller the gap. So I we conclude that the income inequality 
Built to education in Highland decreased over the period of study, uh, which is due to the small, the smallest, the smaller increase of the weight at the higher quantiles. But well, let's go back to see the result here from the measure of dispersion. Uh, this this change uh, in the high the, in the bigger quantiles uh, in and in the higher quantile the change the spread here is is bigger and the spread here in 2018 have become bigger over time Uh, I mean, compare compared to the Q25 and Q, Q25 and Q75, the spread here is become bigger in 2008, but the overall spread uh, compared to two years, it has become smaller in every ca education categories. And, and we also found that in 2015, the gap between the highest and lowest quantile seems to be smallest at those period. Uh, this can be explained uh, with, uh, by the followings. We take a look at the history of changes in Thailand wage policy. And in 2011, there was a major change in Thailand's minimum wage law. Uh, the government launched a new policy stating that the wage rates in Thailand were to be increased on average 60%. That was the biggest change in the minimum wage law in Thailand. Uh, before 2011, the wage was around 200 baht, which is about less than 1,000 yen per day prior to change. And the minimum the wage law is to set it from 300 baht per day. Uh, that's about 60% change. And this was to be taken into effect from 2000. 13 for the whole country and the policy also comes as a surprise and it affects all, all the people at the lowest quantiles the policy also uh, was the biggest change and this, it comes as a sudden adjustment in the shortest time span and this was aimed to help the lower paid worker, such as young people, young who are actually not eligible for work, and those who are older, who are retired, and people with low education, and who can also be considered located at the bottom half, the Q10, Q25 of the quantiles. And moreover, around the same period, the university education, the university graduates also experienced some sudden change. In addition to the 300 baht minimum wage law in 2011, a monthly payment for university graduates also increased to the minimum of 15,000 baht compared to about 8,000 to 12,000 baht before the policy announcement. Uh, this immediately set the payments for university graduates at higher rate than secondary and vocational degree, even though they are engaged in the same type of job. Uh, so the wage premium are expected to be the largest for the bachelor degree holder which is confirmed by another work by Pang Ti Pong Kun 2015. And this policy is targeted at the university graduates who are on the lower end of the wage distribution. Hence, the changes in wage policy are the major cause for the smaller income gap. Between this period of study, between 2009 
and 2018. And the fact is associated with the finding of this study. Uh, this policy, that's why we saw an increase, uh, the smaller gap between the lowest quantiles and the highest quantile over time, as shown in this, in this table, the gap and the spread in the highest and lowest quantile becomes smaller for university graduates and for all other because of the minimum wage law and because of the university graduates. And, and that's, that's the end of the presentation. <laughs> Thank you.